Hello everyone. We are talking about alkenes. In the previous lecture, we talked about some of the properties of alkenes and their stabilities. The stability of the alkenes, now you know, is related to the structure of the molecule, which is dependent upon the level of substitution and the orientation of the substituents present on the carbon-carbon double bond. In this lecture, we will talk about a few methods through which you can prepare alkenes. So alkenes, as we have discussed earlier, are unsaturated molecules. The term unsaturation means that we can add something across the carbon-carbon double bond. So the reverse of that would be elimination. The reverse of addition would be elimination. So if we can add something to the alkene, we have to take something out of a molecule to form an alkene. And that is why such type of reactions are known as elimination reactions. And generally, alkenes are prepared through the elimination reactions. Now, these elimination reactions are of different types. One of them is known as the 1-2 elimination reactions, or we also call it the beta elimination reactions. Again, there are different examples of 1-2 elimination reactions. We will discuss a couple of them here for your understanding. The first one is dehydrogenation. Dehydrogenation means the removal of hydrogen or the elimination of hydrogen. It is actually the elimination or removal of a hydrogen molecule that is H2. So from any saturated molecule if we remove two hydrogen atoms from adjacent carbon atoms. One two elimination means the removal of groups from adjacent carbon atoms. So if we remove hydrogen atoms from adjacent carbon atoms that will create a carbon-carbon double bond and so we will get alkene as a result. So as an example you can see here we have a saturated alkane, a simple ethane molecule. If you remove a molecule of hydrogen from this ethane, now how does that molecule leave? H2 is formed of two hydrogen atoms so one of the hydrogen atom is removed from this carbon, the other atom is removed from this carbon. That creates a double bond between these two carbon atoms. Now this process occurs at very high temperature. To remove hydrogen from this molecule, you have to apply high temperature to get the alkenes. If you have a higher alkane, for example a propane, and you heat it to appropriate temperature, then hydrogen atoms are removed from adjacent carbon atoms and we have a double bond between these two carbon atoms and as a result we will have propene in the products but again you will have to apply very high temperature for this reaction to take place now these reactions are usually not feasible under normal laboratory conditions so there are other methods which are more feasible and convenient under laboratory conditions and that is why these methods are used for the preparation of alkenes more often than dehydrogenation reaction. So one of them is the dehydration of alcohol. Dehydration means the removal of water. So if you have an alcohol molecule you know that alcohols are characterized by the presence of an OH group. So again this falls under the category of 1-2 elimination which means that H and OH groups are removed from adjacent carbon atoms so as to remove a complete molecule of water from the alcohol and form a carbon-carbon double bond that is alkene. This process is usually acid catalyzed which means that the acid activates this alcohol functional group or OH group and water is removed as a result. So for example, we have this primary alcohol, an ethanol molecule, and you treat it with a strong acid that is sulfuric acid in this case at very high temperature at 160 degrees centigrade. You can see here that this carbon atom here has a hydroxyl group. This carbon has only three hydrogens attached to it. So a hydrogen from this carbon and this OH group from this carbon are removed in the form of water to form a carbon-carbon double bond. 
what happens in this reaction is that this oxygen is protonated by the acid acid provides a hydrogen ion to this oxygen now this species then becomes oh2 with a positive charge on oxygen that makes it a very good living group and it leaves along with these bonded electrons as and as a result a hydrogen ion is removed from here leaving behind the electrons to form a carbon carbon double bond and so this H is removed in the form of H plus, which means that the acid is regenerated at the end. And that is why we say that it acts as a catalyst. Another example of an alcohol that forms a, an alkene in the presence of an acid is the secondary alcohol, 2-propanol. Two 2-propanol two has a OH group attached to the second carbon atom and hydrogens attached to these carbon atoms. So a hydrogen from any of these two carbon atoms is removed along with the removal of OH group in the presence of this acid catalyst under high temperature to produce this propene along with the formation of water molecule. Another example is this tertiary alcohol which again is treated with an acid and heated to prepare or to yield this alkene molecule along with the formation of water. A very interesting trend that you might see here is that we have three different examples a primary alcohol a secondary alcohol a tertiary alcohol primary alcohols are those alcohols in which the OH group is attached to a primary carbon in the secondary alcohol the OH group is attached to a secondary carbon and in a tertiary alcohol the OH group is attached to a tertiary carbon atom you can see that in all three cases we have used acid as a catalyst but the reaction conditions are different we have very high temperature used for uh, elimination of water from a primary alcohol but you can just heat a tertiary alcohol in the presence of an acid to form an alkene and remove a water molecule which means that the removal of water or dehydration of a tertiary alcohol is more convenient than a secondary alcohol which is more convenient than a primary alcohol this is because of the fact that uh, as I told you earlier that during the reaction this acid provides a hydrogen ion to this oxygen which protonates it and it leaves in the form of water. Now when this leaves a carbocation is generated at this carbon atom or a carbocation is generated here or a carbocation is generated here. Now in all three cases we have three different carbocations. Here we have the generation of a primary carbocation. Here we will have a secondary carbocation and here we will have the formation of a tertiary carbocation and you know that tertiary carbocations are more stable as compared to secondary which are more stable as compared to primary so when you are going to form so when you're going to form a carbocation from a neutral molecule the cation that is more stable will be formed more rapidly or more conveniently than a carbocation that is less stable so going from tertiary to primary, this is the stability order or decreasing order of stability of the carbocations and that is why the tertiary carbocation is formed quickly and more conveniently. So that is why a tertiary alcohol leaves or eliminates a water molecule easily than a secondary which removes water easily than a primary alcohol. The third reaction or the third one to elimination reaction is dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides dehydrohalogenation means the removal of hx hydro and halogen are removed from alkyl halides alkyl halides are molecule in which a halogen atom is attached to the carbon chain and so Again, this falls under the category of 1-2 elimination. So hydrogen and the halogen are removed from adjacent carbon atoms. And this reaction is base catalyzed. So here we have an example of a secondary alkyl halide. We have a chlorine atom attached to the second carbon atom or the secondary carbon atom in this molecule. Sodium ethoxide is used as a base in the presence of ethanol. Sodium ethoxide is a very strong base and you know that the property of a base is to abstract a proton, abstract a hydrogen ion. So any hydrogen 
that is slightly acidic will be abstracted by this strong base. And you can see here that we have this CH3 group, groups attached to the secondary carbon atom here. So these hydrogens are slightly acidic because of the negative inductive effect of the halogen. So hydrogen is removed from one of these carbon atoms by the base in the form of hydrogen ion, which means that it leaves behind the bonded electrons and so they are shared between the, these two carbon atoms. And this carbon, which already has formed four bonds, will let go one of the bond, and that is the bond with the halogen, which takes away the electrons when it leaves the molecule. Because of the difference in electronegativity of this carbon and halogen, halogen will take the electrons along with it when it leaves the molecule. So as a result, we will have the formation of a carbon-carbon double bond. Halide ion is removed. This ethoxide ion, when it takes a hydrogen, is converted into ethanol and it leaves behind a sodium cation. This sodium cation then combines with the halogen anion to form sodium chloride. So this is how dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides takes place under base catalysis. Here we have a cyclic molecule, a cyclohexane ring, which has a halogen, a chlorine attached to it. Again, one, two elimination can take place in the presence of a base. So from adjacent carbon atoms to this carbon, a hydrogen is removed by sodium ethoxide that forms a carbon-carbon double bond here or here, and a halogen or a chloride ion is removed as a result. So because we are using the same conditions, we will have the formation of a sodium chloride salt ethanol will be formed from ethoxide by removal of this hydrogen ion and we will have the formation of an alkene major product so these are some of the reactions through which you can prepare alkenes in the laboratory all of them are elimination reactions they fall in, under the category of one two elimination or beta elimination and we have discussed dehydrogenation of alkenes dehydration of alcohols and dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides. In the next lecture, we will talk about some of the chemical reactions of alkenes. Thank you so much for now.